Are you ready for rapid fire? You darn right I am. Okay. Let's go. I think we've got some good stuff to, I mean, I, we try as hard as possible to always have good stuff. <laughs> right, but. right. Some interesting stuff that I felt like tonight. Yes. So Agreed. at the post-practice media session last night, offensive coordinator Tommy Reese, everyone's favorite guy, yeah. was asked about two running back sets Your and if opposing player. defenses have given the Irish looks that have taken away more two-back usage these last couple of games. When we've seen next to none, I think it's like three two-back sets in the yeah. last two games. So here is what Reese said to that. Quote, they're mitigating factors personnel-wise why we would or wouldn't. We want our five best on the field. We obviously feel like we have a pretty good advantage if we can have Chris Tyree and another back out there. Chris, Mike, a back, whatever the makeup is. Mike, of course, being Michael Mayer. Yeah. He, he went on. Every week we look at those personnel groupings, three tight ends, two backs that give us a competitive advantage, and we're going to try to maximize those. Week to week, it varies schematically what you see on film. I'm trying not to give too much here. It's a hard question to answer, honestly, end quote. The follow-up question, is it something you want to use more? Quote, yeah, we'll just skip that one, I guess, end quote. So what do you make of all this, Vince? So he's skipping the question, as in he doesn't want to like give away that they're throwing a bunch of two-back offense out there for Syracuse? Is that what that means, that last part? I, you get to read between the lines All here. Right. That, that's right. what we're trying to decipher, well, you know, what exactly that answer means okay. because, you know, they're following up, you know, like, are you going to use more two-back? Personally, that's what I think. Okay. I think Tommy Reese has been a sandbagging son of a gun. And it, it's your favorite, it's your favorite phrase, Sean. It was a word salad. That's what that was. That's it, right. It was a word salad. He's like, well, you know, it just depends on the personnel. It depends on this. It depends on that. We want to get our five best. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I respect the answer because that's the answer I would give. It's like, I'm not going to tell you what my game plan is. I'm not going right. to broadcast it out there for everybody. So I have no problem. That's definitely with part of it. That's definitely part of it. I would like to get him in a room, just the two of us, and ask him what the hell he's thinking by not putting two backs on the field more often. He flat out said they have an advantage when Chris Tyree and another back are in the game. He yeah. did say that. So what are we waiting for? And I think that it helps – them maximize Chris Tyree as well, just based on times they've used it before, having that extra right. back on right. the field. Yes. Well, I agree. You know, what are you waiting for? Does <laughs> it go back to what I was, you know, my conspiracy theory? You know, like are you are you holding it back because it's like you don't want the last two games, so you don't want Syracuse and Clemson to see. I mean, now obviously somebody's going back and looking at every game and it's like, okay, they've got these two back personnel sets. Sure. They haven't used them the last couple of games but they got him. I think we're going to see more of it personally, especially like when you look at Syracuse's secondary and how good, you know, that's the strength of their defense. I, I think that, that, you know, their defense is solid across the board, but the secondary is the strength. I, I just, I think we're going to see more of it. Jesse and I, you know, we're talking a lot about the two backs last night when you have two backs as opposed to, you know, Michael Mayer is always going to be the one, you know, or at least 99% of the time is going to be the one tight end when there's one tight end on the field and whoever else happens to be out there. But when you have the running back group that you have, right? any one of those three guys is going to put you in a better advantage against just about everybody mm -hmm. than having Mitchell Evans yes. or Holden Stays or Canebra. And it's nothing against them. It's just that Michael Mayer and – Two of those three backs are Correct. going to put you in, in in better advantage situations against just about any defense that you see because of the sheer athleticism they bring and the speed and you know their ability to make plays in space. If you want to get Mitchell Evans some time, then give Michael Mayer a breather. Yeah. That that's what I would say. Because we we have discussed many times on this show and other shows at Irish Breakdown is that Michael Mayer isn't the best blocker in the world. Sometimes he's not the most willing blocker in the world. Put Mitchell Evans in. He'll block somebody's butt off, right? Put him in on the 11 personnel. Attach him to the line if that's what you want to do. But I still feel like the advantage is so much more when you have two backs in there. So much more. Yeah. 
Mr. 2.0, are, are you Mr. Miyagi? Like the, the, the five best don't necessarily mean the best five. So I was going <laughs> to, I mean, I, 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 I get what he's, I get what he's yes. saying, but it's, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I get that as well. And I would say I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. agree. But I think we're going to see more of it. And Tommy Reese wasn't just going to come out and say, yeah, we're going to use more two bad yeah, stuff. <laughs> right. I respect the I respect the answer. I also respect the question because it, we're all wondering again, that. This goes back. This goes back to the very first question that we started with on the show tonight about yep. not asking the questions about why the offense, you know, the question was asked. You yes. saw the word salad there. And then he finally right. said, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Right. Like, what are you going to do at that point? The question was asked. It was yeah. a question that needed to be asked. It was asked. Because that then that's the other thing that people don't understand is they don't have to answer the questions that are asked. Right. They they, they can just be like, yeah, next question. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't have to answer. There's It's not a court of law where they have <laughs> right. to answer. He doesn't questions. have to plead the fifth. Right. You know? He doesn't need to, to ask his lawyer <laughs> if he can answer the question. He, he just has his big boy pants on and he can go, I'm not going to answer the question. It right. Down to that. <laughs> <laughs> like you just want to hand you the playbook next? Like, is that what we were looking for here? Right. You know, right. so I respect both sides of it. I respect the question. I respect the answer. I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause you, you, you don't want to give away game plan stuff no. in any of this. No. So, Cause we'd all be much more mad at Tommy Reese if he was like, well, in the script, I've got seven two back yeah. sets. Yeah, it's like <laughs> guys, don't you know it? Play number three is going to be two back, and then play number uh, seven is going to be two back. It's like, well, why are you even asking me this question? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, other Al Golden was also out there last night. Fill in the blank. It's blank that the defensive coordinator, Al Golden, said freshman linebacker Jalen Seed was, quote, really close, end quote, to making his Notre Dame debut last week against UNLV due to injuries to Jack Kaiser and Prince Colley. I mean, it's appropriate. I get it. I mean, that's where Jalen Sneed is on the depth chart right now. And how do you get on the field when you're at a certain place in the depth chart? People in front of you have to get hurt. Yeah. Or they have to be unavailable. Or your play has to rocket. Yes. So far up. That, we yeah. are dead in the middle of the season. There's not usually a lot of movement in the depth chart in the middle of the season if there are no injuries, right? Prince, Prince Kylie and Jack Kaiser were dinged up. So that allowed Jalen to kind of move up and get a little bit closer to getting on the field. I think Al Golden is being completely 100% honest. Like, yeah, he was real close to getting in because we had depth issues at linebacker, you know? Jalen Sneed just isn't as ready as some other guys to play, like Prince Colley, for example. He's just not there yet. He will be. He's going to be a really good linebacker at Notre Dame. Just not this year, right? So I'm totally fine with that answer. Yeah, and he, he said that he told James Laurinaitis, get Jalen ready, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it, it sounded like if Prince Colley hadn't been able to go back in, he missed a series Right. If he hadn't been able to go back in, Jalen Sneed was going to play. Right. And that, you know, I think everyone would have got really excited about that. Oh, yeah. And everything. And this is another guy that everyone really wants to see. I think he's got a great future and everything. But it's just, you know, like to hear that he was that close, you know, and, and like how how close did Jalen know that he was yeah. to going in there? Right. You know? Yeah. Good call. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Because a lot of times the players aren't even aware that they're about to go in. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're just hanging by the coach, just kind of waiting, waiting. You know, not necessarily in the mindset of going in the game, you know, uh -huh. that kind of thing. So Sneed didn't get in. Steve Angeli did. He made a brief <laughs> college debut, three plays, took two snaps at quarterback against mm -hmm. UNLV. Now, last year, Notre Dame had the package for Tyler Buckner to get on the field as a freshman. Do you buy a seller a package for Angeli at this point to get him on the, the field? Maybe a series in a game the rest of the season. like. Big sell, big sell for me. I, I don't uh, see how that, because at this point, it's what's best for the team. And I don't, I mean, bringing in Steve Angeli is not going to mix up the offense like it did when you would bring in Tyler Buckner Tyler because Buckner. he had a completely different skill set than exactly. Jack Cohn, which is why, yes, is it was great for experience purposes. That I mean, that was a byproduct of it. But the main reason that he had a package is because he brought something to the table that Jack Cohn didn't. Right. 
And so it's a sell for me because Steve Angeli is too similar to Drew Pine at this point. He's too similar. Yes, the they're different. Only- He's taller. Okay, I get all that. But they're too similar in quarterbacks. It doesn't give you your offensive boost. Right. Like, exactly what you said right there, for one. And the fact that Marcus Freeman was, was like, he when I asked about him about it after the game, he said it was basically based on score. Like, if Notre Dame had gone up again by three touchdowns, like, midway to late in the fourth quarter, Steve Angeli was probably going in, but the game got too close. And that tells you they don't trust him enough with the game that close to put him into that kind of situation right now. Like if, if Steve Angeli was really good, like if he's great at running the two minute drill, like if there's, you know, going through practice and Angeli is head and shoulders better than, you know, running the two minute drill than Drew Pine is, maybe you consider something like that. It has to be an area, just like you said, the skill set with Tyler Buckner, you know, with the legs compared to Jack mm-hmm. Cohn, there was obviously a huge difference in what Tyler Buckner could give them. There's nothing like that for Steve Angeli right now. Like there's, there's gotta be some area where he is like plus plus yes. where like he can do this. So, you know, again, like it's two minute drill or maybe it's red zone or, you know, whatever it happened to be like the fact that you would trust a true freshman that doesn't have right. that kind of mobility in the red zone. I don't think that that would probably be it, but you know, like think back to Ian Book and Brandon Wimbush when right. that was a thing. There was, you know, first there were, you know, it was like, well, Book gives us an advantage here. And then all of a sudden he had the total advantage. But, well, and then, you know, Tommy Reese was the the closer, you know, uh, when he was at yeah, Notre Dame, you know, Wilson. that kind of a thing, which if that was the case, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But again, you and I aren't at practice. The practices that we were at, Steve Angeli looked like a true freshman. I mean, he, he was clear. It was Buckner. Big gap, Drew Pine, bigger gap, Steve Angeli. I'm sure that those gaps have closed. I get that. But at this point, there's no benefit to that. There's just there's just no benefit. Yes. Yeah. They're Matt, saying what happens if Pine gets hurt? Then you have no choice. And Marcus him. Freeman has said that. You know, yeah. they're trying to get him comfortable in the package of, of plays that he can be comfortable with. At that point, you have no choice. But right now you have a choice because Drew Pine is is still healthy, but you're absolutely right. If Drew Pine is hurt, then then it is on Steve Angeli. You know, just like it was on Drew Pine right. as soon as Tyler Buckner got. Drew hurt. Pine didn't have a bunch of snaps going yeah. into the well, game. Well, he had some last game. year, but that didn't help him out at the end of the no. Marshall game. You know, no, so yeah. like this whole, you know, like you've got to get him some experience. Be- like, I just, I, I don't, I don't believe in that, and that's, that's you know, the reason I asked for. this question is because we're hearing. You know, we do hear a lot of this kind of stuff. It's like you've got to get him ready to the best extent that you can. He doesn't have to have actual playing time if you're putting him in the right kind of situations right. in in practice. To That's get what him practice ready. is for. I mean that yeah. that is what practice is for. I realize you can't replicate game day reps. I get that, but and somebody said you got to put him in against trash teams like UNLV. Well, guess what? Stanford and Marshall were trash teams too, and you lost those games. That's right. So. There is no trash team on Notre Dame's schedule. There's no okay? trash team until you're up by three or four yeah. touchdowns and you've Sorry. proven that they're trash and that you're better than that pile of trash. Right. And then you that, and that's that's always been the thing. The starters have to earn the right for the reserves to get in. Yes. You know, that's that's basically what it comes down to. You don't just start randomly putting in guys especially at the quarterback position. Now there are, you know, there are positions where guys can get in, but you don't just start randomly put in guys to say, well, we got him some experience in that kind of thing. The starters have to earn that right. And right. and that is earned by giving them a big enough lead that you right. can withstand maybe if a couple plays are made in the wrong direction. And there are plenty of programs out there, high school and college alike, where the starters, they look at that as their responsibility to get those backups in the game. But you've got to play to a certain degree to get those guys in the game. It's up to you. It is up to the starters to get those backups in the game, period. So if three touchdowns is what Marcus Freeman was looking for, then it's three touchdowns. And they didn't get there. So, yeah. Keith, going back to what we were talking about with the best five who's the best five you know they were, they were talking about you know and i mean that's you know you're not going to see the same you know obviously my, it starts with michael best. mayer but right. any of the three running backs you know would be part of that so like if we're just going like if if we're ranking 
it would be them. Wide receivers, I honestly don't know. You know, like the combination, you know, like Lorenzo Styles, there's a ton of ability there, but he's got four drops now this season. You know, like which wide receiver do you trust the most? I, you know, I realize, you know, Tobias Merriweather's one for one, but, you know, and, and from a skill standpoint, there's no doubt that he's there, but I just, I don't know that. It's, I think it's tough when it comes to the receivers yeah. because obviously they're not, but that's why you need those running backs even more. That's why right. you're better off with two of the running backs than, you know, an extra tight end or, or wide receiver out there. Agreed. No, I, I, it, and, I, and again, it depends on, there's a little bit of a feel situation. So the two running backs, I would have Chris Tyree in every time and I would rotate it between Diggs and Estime depending on the situation. You know, Michael Mayer is obviously going to be on the field. He's the only guy that's going to be on the field every single time in the five. And then it, it, wide receiver, it would depend. It really would on who's hot. Yeah. Like who's who's got who's got the hot hand, right? I think it would be maybe Merriweather and Lorenzo Styles most of the time. Yeah. But again, there are, there is a skill set that that Brayden Lindsay has that I would get him on the field at times. No doubt about that. There's a skill set that Brayden Thomas has. I would get him on the field at times when they're in their three wide receiver set. Right. I think he can be really good from the slot. So Not I mean, there are, sweeps, you can't but... be in the same personnel grouping all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, it does vary, yeah. but yeah. yeah. All right. So <clears throat> Stanford is offering free tickets for its last two home games of the season. And their announcement says, Fans will get free tickets to their last two games to test drive seats. And that's the term they use, test drive seats for next season, which they, as they say, features home games against Notre Dame, their arch rival Cal, as well as Oregon and other teams. So you get two free tickets to these games. You get to test drive the seats for the rest of this season against Washington State and BYU. If fans don't like their seats, they have the flexibility and priority over the general public to choose other ticket options for next season. So what do you think about this little Stanford promotion they got going on? I will say that they are thinking outside the box to try to get butts in the seats at Palo Alto. I will give them credit for that. Mm -hmm. I will also say that there are going to be plenty of options for those free tickets in those games because you get free tickets. You're going to be able to test out just about every seat in the That's bowl. right. You might get a 50 yard line seat out of it. <laughs> you're going to you know, be able to test out a lot of people different show ones. up there. Like, hey, I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to go over here and you're going to have plenty of options. I dig it. I mean, again, I appreciate thinking outside the box for sure. And this is that. And yeah. I hate to give Stanford a ton of credit for a lot of things, but I will <laughs> give them credit for this. I think they are thinking outside the box to try to get people in their seats and good for them. Because what? if I'm Notre Dame, I want to play in front of a crowd. And Stanford has a tough time packing them in. So. Yeah. And I think the priority thing for next year is really that that's kind of like, it's not just like you're getting two free seats this year, which, you know, again, it's like two free tickets, even though the team sucks, you know, you still beat Notre Dame and you, you, you're getting free tickets to go to the games. And not only do you get the free tickets this year, if you want, you get priority for next year. I if, dig it. If you want them. And so it's like, why not? Season tickets to Stanford can't possibly be that expensive. No, I wouldn't think so. And you're 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 in Silicon Valley, Silicon, not Silicon. Wow, <laughs> Silicon Valley. So people got money up in the Stanford region of things. And so, hey, man, I I I, I like it. I do. I, I I give them a lot of credit. I give them a lot of credit. There's no I way, well. no way, Notre Dame's giving away free tickets like that. They did give away free tickets to UNLV, but true, not like that. They're not. No. Might have to give them away to Tennessee State, though, next year. Oh, that's right. Lou Holtz, Thunder and Bolts says, Gents, give us your predictions for something new on offense, defense we haven't seen so far or very much of that we'll see this week. Anything. This is well, a super chat, by the way. The two, the two back set, I would say, falls into this category. That comes to the top of my mind. So I think that's yeah. fair, right? Otherwise, predicting what Tommy Reese is going to do, like, how? Good call. You know? Good call. I mean... I mean, I'd like to say, oh, Tobias Merriweather's going to have a five-catch game and he's going to go for over, over 100 yards, but that's a pretty tall order based on what we've seen so far. And and defensively, I don't really see anything changing. You know, I think everybody's going to be healthy, that they need to be healthy. 
So I think you're going to see kind of the normal rotation at linebacker, at safety, you know, things of that nature. They've already moved Ben Morrison into the starting lineup. He's getting the most snaps as a corner. I mean, I don't think that's going to change. It's funny. Stymie says an interception would be some new and welcome this week. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And we know the conditions are going to be very nice in the dome, if not a little bit hot. So go get that pick. Go get that thing. That's fine. <laughs> Here's a good one. Because, you know, like, it's not like any of us were going to predict the Mitchell Evans play last week. But, Derek, what did the Kansas City offense do this week? <laughs> you know, they took the Mitchell Evans play from Travis Kelsey. So, <laughs> good question. It's a really Vince, funny. it's McRib season. Do you do the McRib? There are very few things that I find more disgusting than the McRib. I'm, I'm wow. glad to know there's a line you draw. I mean, look. <laughs> I okay. I mean, I will do the fast food thing, obviously. But I know that's like I, I said, I'm glad to know yeah. there's a line you draw. The McRib is just, I mean, they literally form the meat to look like a rib cage. Yes, I got a problem with that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a hard pass for the McRib for me. They form the meat, and apparently, it's like you know, like shoulder like pieces that they grind down and then they there add you know. know like these fillers and stuff to it and it, it just it's like a piece of rubber with barbecue sauce on it i just and i'm not a fan of barbecue sauce either so really that, yeah i'm not a barbecue i didn't know fan. that yeah well you're from northern indiana so that's I fair guess I, I mean but there, i mean there are some barbecue that i will eat but as a general rule i am not a barbecue fan so barbecue sauce fan yeah so i hate Chief Brody says I've had the McRib. Well, people have had the McRib. I hate McDonald's. I don't eat there besides the McRib and a Coke. Wow. So you won't eat anything at McDonald's except the McRib. That's... Like I feel like your priorities are a little askew there, Chief. Just saying. No kidding. Okay. There's other things at McDonald's that are better than the McRib. Ooh, uh, Anthony. Memphis barbecue. See, I don't I'm not a well traveled enough. I've never been to Memphis. I'm I like I like Texas barbecue. I think, you know, even though I'm from, you know, you close spent to Kansas some time City. in Texas. I mean, yeah, yeah. Kansas City is more into the sauces and I'm not okay. like a heavy sauce. I like yeah. you know, like the good dry rub Texas, but I like the Carolina, you know, like a nice vinegary sauce to go okay. with it. So, I, like I, I don't like the sweet sweet yeah, barbecue sauce I get that. Like that. But Memphis barbecue is good too. All barbecue is good barbecue. Let's be honest. But Chief Brody's a a uh, Chick Fil A guy, and we are a Chick Fil A family as well. The problem is, I have to give up a portion of my house in order to go to Chick Fil A because it's so expensive. Yeah, to so take a family of seven to Chick Fil A, you're you're dipping into the paycheck a little bit. And <laughs> Mister Two Point is just bringing the heat. <laughs> I see. Brian was right. Un American. He does not eat McRib and he does not watch the Rocky movies. I can get behind the McRib. But you've seen, have you seen Vision Quest, by the way? Have you seen? Vision no, Quest? I need to see that. I actually want to Sean see Sean McDermott, the Buffalo Bills head coach, was talking about Vision Quest. Like, Shut I think up. he was a high school wrestler too. He was talking about Vision Quest on Good Morning or uh, one of the NFL Network nice. earlier today. So I bet that made you smile. Didn't little it? Vision Quest shout. Matthew Modine, my man. That's I right. Want, Take down I, shoot. I, I, I do want to see that movie. So if you find it on a streaming net channel. I've got the DVD if you've okay. still got a DVD player. I do. So, in the basement. I mean, how do you so, think I don't have that movie, right? See, I know, right? <laughs> Speaking of wrestling, and I know we're, we're traveling down a dangerous path here. My seven-year-old comes home with wrestling signups. He's like, Dad, I want to wrestle. Really? Let's go, boy. There's hope for the Diderios yet. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. Do it. Let's, Let's do it. go. I was so excited. He has shown zero interest in athletics until today. That so is awesome. Up. That is awesome. You know why he wants to do it? Because he wants to beat up my oldest son. Oh, there you go. That's what he told me. I was like, he hey. To take down Dylan. Whatever the whatever the motivation is. He's 15. I don't think that's going to happen. But whatever the motivation is, kid, let's go. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, let's wrap it up with that. We had a lot of good stuff tonight. Appreciate all the participation. Yes. And uh, don't forget, there is an IB countdown to kickoff. I guess we should be reiterating that since yeah. there was some question about that earlier in the show we will have it still uh we, you know we'll be there and uh usma 87 loves vision quest as well shout Beautiful. out to you 
But we will have Ivy Countdown to kick off 10 o'clock Saturday morning, as always, even though we've got that noon game. Ooh. You know, we might just abbreviate it a little Slightly. bit. Talk to the Syracuse guy today. So we'll have that, you know, coming nice. up and all that kind of good stuff. So beautiful. Got that on the way. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Vince, I will talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Glad to know you won't be eating McRibs in the meantime. <laughs> talk to you tomorrow to finish off the week. Ivy Nation Sports Talk.